One of the things I was going to ask you is there's, there's so much conflicting data as you just went into there um, with this global warming climate change thing. Um, you have kind of CO2 really and, and the sun as kind of two polar opposites. Yeah. Why, why is there so much confusion? Surely science is science. Um, one question. And, and why, why are the powers that be seem to be putting, promoting so much into the carbon dark side? Um, global warming. Well, let, <coughs> let's first look at the, the issue of science. Surely the science of carbon dioxide is settled as indeed it's projected. Well, as an analyst, I tried to find that science. I couldn't actually find a peer reviewed paper that actually would describe to me the carbon dioxide model. <coughs> and uh, I spent three months looking for it. Well, what I did find was a professor of meteorology at MIT in the US who sat on that first committee of the International Panel for Climate Change, appointed by the US government as a specialist and an expert in his field. And he reports in that first meeting that when they were looking at the carbon dioxide model, which has to be a computer model, um, Carbon dioxide is actually quite rare in the atmosphere. It's measured in parts per million. And uh, in its normal natural state, it's about less than uh, half a molecule per thousand molecules of air. And uh, so we've increased it to slightly more than half by 35%. And all of those scientists in that original committee were agreed that that, on its own, is not going to give you much of a problem, even if you double carbon dioxide. The warming effect will be minor within the natural variations that the planet is used to. But the majority of scientists on that committee thought that the carbon dioxide effect would be amplified by increasing water vapor. And this one scientist uh, at MIT said, well, you can't rely on that. If that water vapor turns to cloud, then you have a compensatory mechanism. And so you won't get the amplification. And um, by some um, accident of the committee, he wasn't present at a crucial decision as to which way they should go. And uh, he objected and said, well, uh, you, know, you can't assume that you're right. And, and he, he missed the meeting. But when it came to the drafting, uh, he found that his, his view had not been represented. And he objected. And I think initially he resigned. He went back in uh, eventually. But by this was all in the early 90s. <clears throat> by 2001, the IPCC had, th had issued three assessment reports on the science of global warming. And at the same time as their third assessment report came out, the US National Academy of Sciences, which is one of the top science institutions in the world and supplies many of the experts and a lot of the data upon which global warming is based, they instigated their own committee. And this professor was on that committee, along with another professor who was on the same IPCC committee. They were on the National Academy of Sciences committee, an 11-man committee. And they advised the White House. And they advised the White House that the IPCC report was not a sound basis for policy. So this is the controversy and level of disagreement amongst the scientists themselves at the same time as Al Gore was vice president. And he was party to all of that information. And yet, in the film to which he got an Oscar and a Nobel Prize, he, he turns to camera and said, you will have heard that there's a disagreement among the scientists. Well, actually, not really. So that is the process. There is disagreement among the science. Science is very seldom cut and dried. Um, I know in my own work, where one or two scientists have prevailed against a consensus. There was a consensus that it was perfectly safe to x-ray pregnant women. It took 15 years to turn that consensus around. 
and from the work of one scientist, then another joining and so on and eventually being championed. And eventually, the truth becomes known. From what I've seen of the science, the truth is out there. Um, and it is not that carbon dioxide is driving global warming. And indeed, in the last 12 months, we've seen a drop in global temperatures equal to the rise of the last 50 years. Um, and those how, do, sorry, <laughs> how do these scientists explain that? Surely that's, that's completely... Well, if they, if they explain it, if you go to the Hadley Center, which is one of the top global warming laboratories, climatologists, this is the computer prediction people, um, you will not find any reference to this drop. And so they don't bother to explain it. Um, when they're asked, they will say, well, it's natural variability, as if natural variability could not be predicted. But natural variability is predictable. It comes in cycles. It's related to solar cycles. And there is a a great body of scientific evidence which shows that. 